this webinar, I request our president, Dr. Kasturi Donimat of Karnataka State OG Association to kindly welcome this August gathering. Over to you, madam. Uh, pleasant evening to one and all. Namaskar to one and all. It's, it's really a moment of proud privilege to join hands with Indian Academy of Pediatrics Karnataka branch uh, to uh, host this webinar. Uh, a few days back, one Dr. Rupa called me and told, we'll do webinar during this breastfeeding week. Then we are searching for a date. Then she told, oh, whole week it is full. Then we told, I told, okay, we'll do it on the last day at least. That's today is the 7th August is the last day of this breastfeeding week. So we thought somehow we have to do it. So because we want the knowledge from the luminaries from IAP to spread out to our Kasoga family. So uh, I immensely thank Dr. Rupa, President of Karnataka Chapter IAP, Dr. Dinkar More, uh, President of I IYCF, Dr. Manisha Secretary, Dr. Mallikarjun Secretary, for coming forward to host this webinar in association with Kasoga. And immensely thank the whole association of Karnataka Chapter IAP and especially Dr. Rupa Bellas. In association with IAP, we also conducted NRP workshops, hands-on, in many centers, especially in Kim's and all. And the feedback from the delegates were just excellent. Now the, our uh, staff, PGs, and the delegates who attended that, they really are feeling so confident to handle the babies. Even in, in case of emergency, pediatrician is not able, they tell, no, we can manage the baby. So that is a kind of outcome out of the skill transfer from this association with IAP. So looking forward for more and more activities <laughs> Uh, Rupa Madam and the whole team. And today's webinar on breastfeeding is very, very important as all of you know. I, I always call it, this is the lifeline, like lifeline. This is the best insurance which we can give it to the baby for their lifelong to be free of diseases. So uh, no need of making any uh, assets or anything. This is the best asset. When we feed the baby and give a good health, that is the best asset which we can give it to the baby for the whole life. And also, uh, I this is the best foundation. If you they breastfeed, that's the best foundation on which the baby can build the future health and uh, uh, prosper in their life. So uh, this is a so this is a very very important breastfeeding week. Uh, so this is a week which we have to take an opportunity to spread the knowledge, not only among the uh, public, our patients, but among our healthcare workers and our own friends, because this is the need of the hour. I know because of uh, modernization, this is coming down, but only it is in spite of so much awareness, sensitization, it's only 40 to 50 percent breastfeeding. So we have to encourage more and more. And I know lots of myths and superstitions and misconceptions in and around breastfeeding, which goes on and on in spite of our uh, sensitizing the patient. We have their attenders, the Ajis, uh, or grandmothers and all, who have so many myths and the, the patients believe them rather than us. So I immensely thank today's moderator, Dr. C.R. Banapur Matsar, a luminary in the field of pediatrics, who is who of IAP, who is who of the of, uh, field of pediatrics, whom all of us look up to, Sir, thank you so much for accepting our invitation and being there today. And everybody is waiting to hear from you. So I'll not take much time. We are just waiting to hear the pearls of wisdom from you, sir, from take home messages and practical tips, which we can implement in the ground level. And I immensely thank all the panelists, Dr. MJ Remat, sir, our chief patron of Kasoga, who is the main pillar of Kasoga. Because of MJ Remat, sir, the Kasoga has grown so much in the last 32 years and it has stood where it is now. All the credit goes to sir. And thank you, sir, for joining the webinar. And thank you, Dr. Rupa, madam, and uh, uh, Dr. Shivanan, and uh, Dr. Uh, Managarat Dhamma, Dr. Uh, the, we are, and Dr. Rajeshri Paladi as the OBJYN team. And from pediatric, we have Dr. Lata Shamnur from uh, down Gere. So the whole team of the luminaries in pediatrics and OBG are here to educate you and I'll not come in the way. And I once again thank the whole team of our Kasoga, our chief patron, MJ Remat sir, patron, Dr. Nagaraj sir, 
vice president uh, president dr vidya immediate past president dr sajjan sir our uh, very dynamic bharti rashekar who is moc doing moc today and our treasurer dr durga das and our whole ec team and whole managing ec team of the pediatrics iip karnataka chapter for coming out joining hands for this excellent academic extravaganza on this day thank you thank you everyone and all the best for the webinar yeah. thank you madam for those kind words and without restraining us just for a week let us support and educate breastfeeding throughout the year and for every mother who comes to us to deliver i request our chief patron dr mg hiremat to kindly uh, say a few words to grace the occasion sir you are muted sir you are you are unmuted yeah. yeah. can you hear me yes sir thank you thank you bharati uh, at the outset i would like to thank the kasoga team and uh, professor banapur mat sir who just called me yesterday evening i told me that i am traveling to bangalore this is uh, my request that you must join tomorrow then i said our uh, i am waiting for our nmc inspectors sir said tomorrow is sunday don't worry they won't come you must join so that's how i am here uh, just my opening remarks what i would like to say is that for the last 3 decades Uh, professor bana purmat and late madam professor i am not getting her name yeah. from davangere nirmala kesri nirmala kesri madam nirmala kesri they, they are working for this for last 3 decades and they have not left any opportunity to make the educate and make everyone but unfortunately what i am observing is that in many of the hospitals still the breastfeeding is not implemented properly i do not know what is the reason whether we doctors or pediatricians are not following the rules properly or whether the the community at large is not accepting still i find quite a good number of them they start the oral feeds on the day one only and they have no patience many a times i tell the patients that wait for 3 days minimum everything is there the stock for 3 to 4 days don't worry still them they don't listen and when we go to go out of the nursing home our nurses will start giving them glucose water yeah. sir in spite of doing so much for last 3 decades i don't know why we are not able to achieve and the, today is a day that we are celebrating the the this week of breastfeeding and uh, sir has definitely taken an initiative and dr kasturi donimat bharti they are always there for any academic activities and just i want to inform my iip colleagues that our kasoga is a very very vibrant association we are doing almost two programs in a week online in spite of covid when the covid has gone also our online programs have become very very popular uh, and this is one of the program which we are associated with these few words i wish all the best for this program and i request sir to leave me a little early because uh, there is a family function in the house at 8 o'clock i told them i will be back by 8 o'clock i cannot miss this program thank you very much sir yes thank you sir thank you very much sir for your blessings and kind words i uh, it is indeed a privilege because we have uh, not only the kasoga but we have the president of iap uh, karnataka dr rupa bellad with us Here, Dr. Chand uh, Dr. Banapur Mat, who is a legend in pediatrics all over the country, and we have the <clears throat> infant and young child feeding chapter president, Dr. Dinakar More, with us here. I now request Dr. Rupa Bella, the president of Karnataka chapter IAP, to kindly say a few words. Thank you, Dr. Bharti. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, respected my teacher, Dr. Banapur Mat, sir, all the seniors, and president. Uh, Dr. Kasturi Doni, but Madam and all the office bearers of uh, Kasoga and Indian Academy of Pediatrics, we do have our executive uh, EB member, Dr. Geeta Patil, and all other members of IAP and uh, Kasoga. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, Kasturi Madam and Kasoga for accepting our invitation to celebrate World Breastfeeding Week, because without obstetricians. 
contribution. <laughs> I don't think we would be able to uh, succeed in promoting breastfeeding in our infants uh, because both our objectives are the same, to have a healthy baby at the end. So I thought it is very important to involve uh, the obstetricians in celebrating it uh, so has to create more awareness as uh, Hiramat sir was telling, uh, whatever we are doing for the last two, three decades, we are seeing the numbers are not st still staggering. So uh, this is where we have to come together, I feel, because there are a lot of common uh, <clears throat> messages which we need to give to the mothers in this regard. So we thought we'll celebrate along with you all uh, and increase the awareness. So that was the whole objective. And thanks again for accepting. Another uh, important thing I would like to request Kasoga is uh, we need to partner in it, not just at this particular moment. What I, we are planning is to go into all the districts of Kasoga along with IAP and try to do some hands-on workshop at least once a month for the remaining five to six months in uh, the districts which you can identify, madam, uh, uh, so has to uh, bring all the obstetricians together along with us and try to give this hands-on workshop training as Hiramat sir was telling the skill, what is lacking. I think we need to revive it so, so that this would become a day-to-day -day practice in all the nursing homes and hospitals. So that's my objective. Hope we'll be able to achieve it with all your support. Thank you again for giving this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rupa. And of course, Gasoga is always with you. We would be very happy if you could conduct workshops in all the 20 societies we have. And we have another three more which have just bloomed this year. So we would be happy if you could come and help us out in all these districts and take this project up. Now we have with us Dr. Dinakar More, who is the president of the Infant and uh, Young Child Feeding Chapter of the IAP. Dr. Dinakar More, we welcome you to this webinar and we request you to say a few words. Sir, unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself. More, sir. Unmute Karo. Dr. More. Dr. More, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Oh. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, madam. It's a privilege to be a part of this uh, discussion. And uh, we know at the end we will go enriched. All I would like to say to the organization is, With this, I think I have no regret to ban up much, sir. Yes. Thank you very much, sir, for the short and sweet message. Yeah. Because uh, we will, I think, go directly to the converse, uh, to the discussions and the panel discussion we are going sure. to have today. And I would like to, I know Dr. Mana Paramat requires no introduction to all of us over here and the participants, but just as a formality, we know that Dr. Mana Paramat was a professor and HOD at the JJMC Medical College in the Department of Pediatrics. He was the uh, brainstorm and uh, he was the brain behind the breastfeeding hospital initiative, which he took up way back and popularized it all over India. He has been the mentor for all the pediatricians and neonatologists. And I would say also being a pediatrician and neonatologist of many of our children, including mine. And he has been the president of the infant and young child feeding chapter and the founder president of India. And he has persistently been uh, in insisting that breastfeeding has to be promoted and he continues to do so to this day. So I think this is a very short resume. He's been so humble enough that he has not provided me with any printed resume. So that is why I have this very clumsy resume to present to all of you. My excuses for the same. And of course, we have a very eminent panel here who are going to discuss the very simple day-to-day -day issues. That's what Dr. Bana Parmat was telling us. Let us talk about what happens in our clinics and hospitals day-to-day. No high funda things over here. So we have a very eminent panel. We have Dr. Rupa Bellad and Dr. M.G. Hiramit over here as the panelists. We have Dr. Lata, who is a professor and of the pedi professor of pediatrics at the SSMIS Medical College of Davangere. We have Dr. Shivanand, who is professor of pediatrics from Kim's Hubli. We have Dr. Rajeshi Paladi from the Kasoga side, who is professor of OBG at Bulbarga. And Dr. Nagratnama is the committee chairperson of the breast committee chairperson of Kasoga. Uh, here we would like to reiterate uh, that Kasoga has 22 committees for each of our adolescent health, for breast, for breast committee, and so and so. We've got 22 committees. 
and Dr. Nagratnama is the chairperson of the Breast Committee. We welcome all of you. And sir, without wasting much time, I request you to kindly start the panel that is Step Up for Breastfeeding. Let us educate and support. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Bharti. Uh, am I audible to all of you? Yes, sir, you are. At the outset, Dr. Rupa, our president of the Indian Academy of Pediatrics, Karnataka State, and Dr. Dinkar More, our president for IYCF Karnataka chapter, along with Dr. Hishmi Mallikarjun and Manisha Bandari, Mandarkar. She is our secretary for the Karnataka AAP. We are very happy to be here with you all. And I'm happy that Dr. Geeta has logged in, Durgapa has logged in, and uh, many of our pediatric colleagues have logged, Bhuvaneshwari has logged, I'm seeing all their names. Yes. Very, very happy. And the few introductory remarks that were made, and you have energized the movement so much in a minute <laughs> that we have state branches, we all can have skill-based workshops. Yes, sir. That is wonderful, very, very wonderful. So, I met Dr. Rangratnama yesterday in uh, Raja Rajeshwari Medical College. We had a full day workshop there. And I'm extremely happy that my close friend, Dr. M.G. Hiramat, he responded so positively. I know he has to leave at 8 o'clock. So we'll first try to start off with a few questions. The first question I would like to pose is, before I come to the questions, step up for breastfeeding. Educate and support mothers. Educate and support. We don't say mothers because educate and support, you need an entire team. A professor of OBG can't be there everywhere. A professor of pediatrics can't be there everywhere. We need an army of frontline workers. An army for a state like Karnataka. It is very, very disheartening that our initiation rates have not gone. In fact, they have fallen down. Now it is 41%. Initiation of breastfeeding within one hour of birth, the state figure has come down. Earlier it used to be at least 60, 70. There was a trend of improving, but unfortunately, things are not going, going in a proper direction. Uh, I welcome Manisha Bandarkar also. She has just logged in. Okay, so educate and support is not just for pediatricians, obstetricians. We have nurses. We have also other partners in this program. We need to support the entire team. Okay. Most important is by educating and supporting, what we are saying is whatever you say and do, when a woman goes through pregnancy, when she goes through childbirth, and she struggles in the postnatal world, whatever your theory and your knowledge is not going to help her. What really can help her is a sympathetic and empathetic approach by your team of members who are around her. Who are those people? They are the nurses, our ward ayahs, then support staff in the hospital. They all make a big difference. In fact, when a woman goes through child labor, it is, child labor is known, the highest pain is labor pain. Such a uh, painful situation. And uh, there is so much of high tension flying around in the labor room. Everybody is worried. They are running around here and there. And this woman has to go through such a situation. But at the other side, we'll let us remember, it is not a disease state. Pregnancy, childbirth, lactation, breastfeeding, purpurium, all these are physiological extended processes of life. A child is conceived and the child is born a gift to the community. And this child has to thrive and grow well. We all know that early initiation of breastfeeding brings down the neonatal mortality tremendously. If it is within one hour, it is 25 percent of neonatal mortality, but if you initiate much earlier to that, the figures are still much better. 
skin to skin contact we are going to discuss later so i'll start off with the first question what is important is nobody is born with all the inherent skills and knowledge for 70% of our women who give birth to a baby are primees we should remember that 70 or even more sometimes a woman may go through a second pregnancy those numbers are becoming less and less so a primee mother it is a first experience through the nine months of pregnancy it is the obstetrician who has been has developed a bond a developed a relationship they have come to the obstetrician on a monthly basis sometimes more than a month especially as the progress pregnancy proceeds towards childbirth they come more often so already a very big bond beautiful bond has been built between the obstetrician and the parturient mother and then suddenly she has to scenes will change a child is born and a pediatrician comes into the picture but the obstetrician does not go out of the picture in fact breastfeeding is a main domain supporting mothers of the obstetricians in the labor ward as well as in the postnatal wards so first statement i'll make is breastfeeding is a mind game what do i mean by mind game a woman who has self confidence belief in herself trust in her doctor trust in her elder family relatives like her mother her elder brother they all trust each other and they know hey nam doctor adare namge ella sari maadi kodtare the trust is the most important thing that is the most important thing and this mind game of breastfeeding very easily a mother's confidence can be shattered not just broken it can be shattered into pieces this is what we have to remember and preparation of the mind of the mother is a very very important aspect so my i'll ask the first question to my dear friend dr mg hiramat dr hiramat antenatal counseling of pregnant mothers is extremely important as we yes. all know yes now there is research evidence to show that antenatal counseling can help in very successful not only breastfeeding pure perium as an entire process so how early you would like to be consider antenatal uh, counseling thank you sir thank you uh, i think i have made this remark in the beginning uh, of my initiation mm. i truly agree that the, whatever percentage you have given us that initiation is less than 41% probably i feel it is we gynecologists are responsible for this as you rightly told we have a lot of time to discuss with the pregnant lady about the breast feeding but unfortunately none of us talk to the pregnant woman regarding the breast feeding till she delivers mm -hmm. only after the delivery when she tells us that she is not finding the milk then only we start telling them personally i feel that regarding the breast feeding counseling it must start immediately after the completion of the seventh month why i am telling seventh month is after seventh month we are asking these pregnant women to come for antenatal checkup every two weeks after eight months we are requesting them to come every week that means almost six to seven times we are meeting them not even a single time we counsel about breastfeeding i think if obstetrician takes this vote that i will tell at every visit about the importance of the breastfeeding i think definitely our 40% will become 80% and i know that when the initiation was started by late dr nirmala madam and yourself you people came to our postnatal ward and in postnatal ward you made us to spend at least 10 minutes for each patient today i will tell you in most of the busy government hospitals not even one minute is spent with a postnatal woman because they are also busy with their other work i think we have to make it a point may not be possible by professor at least assistants at least post graduates at least interns at least nursing staff at least student nurses they should be made responsible i think if we do this early counseling starting at 7 month only i will be able to reach above 80% that is my gut feeling sir 
Thank you very much. That was a wonderful remark that you made. Uh, now, in my next question will go to Dr. Rajeshri Paladi. Madam, you are, you are from Gulbarga. We know, we also know your father. He was our good friend. There are two ways of counseling a mother. In a very busy OPD, antenatal OPD in a teaching medical college or a government hospital, there may be 50 mothers who come. You can't really manage that crowd. So there are two ways of counseling. One is one-to-one -one and group counseling. What one would you like to do and what is the uh, difference between these two? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for having me as a panelist uh, to be participating with such uh, noteworthy stalwarts of IAP with whom I'm interacting for the first time, sir. And in fact, Dr. More, sir, happens to be my neighbor. And it's such a <laughs> nice feeling to see him on the screen, to meet him on the screen here. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, as natural as breastfeeding as childbirth is right from the first child that was born on the planet. But still, we still uh, keep uh, continuing to talk about uh, breastfeeding like as if this is something, a recent scientific rocket science and uh, keep uh, stressing every uh, year after year after year and still not achieving uh, what uh, needed uh, target is needed. Um, just as the uh, sir has mentioned, I uh, thing which stuck to my mind at this moment is that maybe at 32 to 34 weeks, we should make it as a compulsive, inclusive uh, counseling for the uh, patients, make it mandatory. Like we do a growth scan at 34 weeks. Similarly, let us all maybe uh, do a counseling session at 34 weeks for all the patients who come for uh, antenatal checkup. Now, coming to the statement whether it could be a group counseling or a one to one counseling, we just uh, can't uh, make it as a blanket statement because the needs and requirements for each of uh, these uh, individuals would be different. We have uh, uh, girls who are coming for the first time pregnant, and um, many of them come from the uh, rural background who have hardly any idea and uh, maybe they are not educated and uh, they're not open for discussion or like we see the um, the software people, they know minute to minute or hour to hour changes which can happen in the colostrum. I had one girl who came to me and said, see, it is 34 hours now. She happened to be my neighbor's daughter. Okay, I'm not getting feeding because it's 34 hours and still colostrum is not coming. So that is the kind of varied uh, responses we have from the uh, crowd and we can't generally uh, make it as a blanket statement. Now, those girls or those women who are the low risk, maybe we can counsel them for the group uh, uh, counseling, especially in the teaching uh, institute where the number in the crowd is more. But if we have to come to the private setup, then it, it is really not difficult to do the counseling one-to-one. -one. We can do that and uh, take the help of uh, the paramedics or the uh, nurses or the junior doctors who are there to assist. Mm -hmm. um, also, these high-risk girls, we had one patient who was uh, 29, very excited about her pregnancy and childbirth. But then after one week, she came with the postpartum blue saying, I never imagined that this could be so miserable that uh, having a baby, I was excited, but having the feeding uh, and the wake up calls every two hours and all is very difficult. So categorize these patients and by the body language, we come to know that who are prepared and who are uh, ready and uh, Generally, those girls or those women who come with the mothers and the mother-in-laws are taken care of and uh, they're being uh, uh, counseled and uh, slowly being prepared for this. But especially the high-risk pregnancies or the working class or those who are unattended by or leading a nuclear kind of family, maybe they need to be addressed individually, sir. Thank you very much for your wonderful remarks. I would like to share with the entire group here, there is now enough research evidence. Counseling, whether you do one-to-one -one or group counseling, makes a tremendous difference. But it has to be done. It should be done in a proper scientific and methodic way. We will not go into the details of that because of limitation of time. At least if the mother knows that, Oh, you are, you are going to be very successful. You will be able, surely able to be feeding your baby. A gentle remark like that and a tap on her shoulder. Such an assurance has to keep on happening as Dr. M. G. Ramat was telling. They come once a week towards the later part of, you know, or, uh, later part of pregnancy of the third trimester. 
So you have to structure and build it up. A woman who has just become pregnant, you can't talk about breastfeeding. It's it, it's not necessary and it doesn't come into, it's out of place. But as pregnancy advances, you start giving graded messages. Supposing it goes into later pregnancy, dinrag bidlu, you know, people in the community say, once the head get engaged, there is breathing, the breathing becomes easy for the mother and the grandmother knows, ah, in, in another one week or 10 days, this lady is going to deliver. Community knowledge is so much. Grandmothers are very knowledgeable about many things. Anyway, it's okay. What is important for us is antenatal counseling should be done. And as you rightly say, one could choose. There are many women who can have a delivery prematurely. So don't be waiting till 32 weeks, but certainly have some points when the pregnant woman should go through a counseling process. Thank you for that. There is a lot of uh, next question is antenatal breast examination. Antenatal breast examination is a very controversial subject. And I would like Dr. M.G. Hiramat to address this yeah. very difficult question. Yes. Yeah. Thank so you, it's sir. not all that easy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I became the uh, breast committee chairman of Foxy way back. And there we started uh, having workshops <clears throat> regarding breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. I am of the first mm -hmm. opinion that antenatal breast checkup is a must. Mm -hmm. And many of the gynecologists, they never check the breast of the pregnant woman till they deliver. Mm -hmm. Personally, I feel at least one checkup must be done mm -hmm. once they complete 32 weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, why I am telling this 32 weeks is after that we have got 8 weeks time. Mm -hmm. And many a times they have got retracted nipple Many a times they have got the problems in the nipple. Many a times they are finding difficulty how to feed the baby. I think breast checkup has to be a part of the antenatal care. Unfortunately, in our curriculum, it is not included, breast checkup. See, only we do breast checkup when you want to confirm the early pregnancy. Same should be done after three, uh, six, seven months also. And first checkup must be done around 32 to 34. That is my feeling. Okay. And if you do that, definitely at that time, you can tell the, the pregnant mother that you check up your breast on your own. There is no need to do ourselves every time. We, we must tell her once and after that she can check her breast every week. There is no problem. And later on, after the delivery, looking for a retracted nipple, doing all exercise, not achieving the result is the biggest problem. And many a times we face it, sir. Madam Nagaratna, Madam, I invite your comments because you are chairperson of the Breastfeeding Committee of Kasoga. Yeah, kindly unmute yourself, Madam. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. And it was nice uh, interacting with you yesterday and uh, today to be in this panel. And also, I uh, thank the Kasoga for in, uh, to be a part of this uh, program webinar. As uh, Hiramit has said, I do agree that the examination, even though it's a controversial, I know that uh, uh, the recommendation sometimes says that we should not uh, meddle with the nipple in the early part of pregnancy because it can cause uh, premature contractions and she may get into preterm true, labor. True, true. But still, so, uh, but I feel uh, you can do the examination even in the as soon as we diagnose pregnancy, I think breast examination should be a part of general examination. And later, maybe after 37 weeks, if there are any retracted nipple and all, I think we can uh, start uh, 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 educating the mother to uh, draw the nipple to a certain extent. Because after 37 weeks, it is we consider it as term. Even if she gets into labor, I think it should not be a uh, uh, problem for her. So we can st start her to, if she has got a uh, retracted nipple, to pull out the nipple and massage it so mm. that she can uh, uh, initiate the breastfeeding uh, effectively soon after the delivery, rather than waiting later, like once uh, she is uh, delivered and later we see there is no breast milk following the delivery. Then we start looking at the breast examination, whether it is an inverted nipple or what, is there any cracks or not. Then instead of that, I think uh, in the last part of pregnancy, 
uh, in a normal woman, not the high risk pregnancy. High risk pregnancy, of course, there are uh, other issues. Uh, so we can examine the breast uh, okay. and uh, also try to, uh, if there are minor um, corrections, we can do in the and late part, later part of pregnancy. I think. So. Yeah, Dr. Rajshree, you would like to contribute. Uh, sir, I think most of the points have been covered. Uh, okay. One or two highlights are that, uh, apart from the inverted retracted nipples, maybe the chafing of the skin or the skin care, uh, uh, the roughening of the skin and uh, the tissues handling uh, should be taught off so that uh, sometimes just by applying certain emollients, the nipples become soft mm -hmm. and uh, more pliable for uh, feeding. But uh, I think most of the points have been covered and uh, told yeah. by Madam and Sir. Uh, but, you know, I would like to share with the entire group that one obstetrician should not feel bad if antenatal examination of the breast has not been done. That is the latest research. Okay. The latest research, watch it, what it has revealed, that whatever nipple has happened, the nipple goes on getting better and better as pregnancy advances. The incidence of inverted nipple is not really very high. Truly inverted nipples are extremely uncommon, extremely uncommon. And as uh, Nagaratnama Madam has told, meddling with the nipple in uh, first and second trimester of pregnancy is not to be recommended. Hoffman's exercises, we all were thinking that it's going to do a lot of wonders. There is now, it has been shown very conclusively that it is of no benefit. Then they came the nipple shields. Again, it was shown that a woman who is made aware of a nipple problem. And if you want to prescribe some treatment, what the research is showing now is, it is going to be derogatory to her mind. As I was telling you, breastfeeding is a mind game. And therefore, even if you have done a breast examination, at the end of the breast examination, one has to make a very gentle remark. Things are going well. Your breasts are going to produce enough milk. That is enough. Sometimes a mother herself may request doctor and nobody will say that also might happen. They only may request. You can't say I will not see. See the breast and then just, just make a gentle tap her on the shoulder. These words are much more than medications. So with this, now I would like to go back to the next question. So before I go to the next question, let it be clarified here to all my obstetric pediatric neonatology colleagues, antenatal breast examination is not a must. Even when it is done, no negative remark should be done to the mother. That is very, very, very important. At the same time, you must, every mother pregnant, I mean pregnant lady, she is not a mother yet, she is pregnant. The baby is, the fetus is in her womb. The remark which must said is, a positive remark saying that, oh, your breasts are very nice. They are going to produce enough milk for you. There will be no issue. This positive message has to go. Suddenly, hey, if you have got an inverted nipple, such a thing should never come out of our mouth, either it is with the professor or his uh, residents or nurses or his entire team. One should not make a negative remark and make the mother, you know, her mind will get disturbed. And also, uh, I'll not go into more details, but if sometimes the mother may request an examination, it has to be done just to reassure. It is your reassurance is more important. Now we'll go to the next question to Dr. Rajeshri Palladi. Sir, can I As, can I take ten seconds, sir? Yeah, please, sir. I, I would like to say hi to Dr. More Dinkar. <laughs> I have not seen him since many years, maybe 10 years. <laughs> he was a postgraduate student in KMC True. and I was an intern working oh. in his unit. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Nice to see you, Dr. Dinkar. Sir, you are muted, Dr. Dinkar. Please unmute yourself. Sir, please unmute and make your comment. Your friend wants to say hello. <laughs> hello, hello, Dr. Dinkar. Hello. Hello, very good evening. I am seeing you after 10 years. <laughs> oh. uh, okay. How are you? Fine, fine, fine. You oh. were a PhD student. I was intern in your unit. Oh, <laughs> nice God. to see you that you have become the president of the association. No, oh, we, right. call, we call. Sir, will you give me permission to. Uh, uh, sir, I know you have to leave. You can yeah. leave now. 
and in your my, case my, you have my daughter is carrying and yeah. we have to prepare her for the delivery and breastfeeding congratulations <laughs> sir and we are looking <laughs> forward for the sweets okay <laughs> thank you so thank you very much you will thank be you. well represented thank by you. kasturi thank you, bharti is thank there nagratnama madam is there we will take up and i'm so sure many other of your colleagues <laughs> will walk in thank you sir all of them you. are welcome to make contributions sir we have dr anuradha parmesh who is also member of kasoga and she is the ima bangalore branch president and state ima vice president so she is also there sir hello to dr anuradha madam can you unmute your video yes uh, very nice seeing you madam hello yeah anuradha please unmute you are not heard i think your bluetooth is not on remove your bluetooth and speak mg sir thank you very much sir for sparing your precious time we wish your daughter a very safe delivery and hope she breastfeeds Successful as far as possible <laughs> till 2 years wishing her all the best yeah, for that I... <laughs> anuradha madam welcome make a few remarks yes sir good evening can you hear me barthi yeah no yeah, yeah, yeah. now, now we can okay so uh, with my uh, 38 years of practice uh, with all the uh, trial and error that we have done in the sense that postnatally you land up with lot of uh, issues regarding breastfeeding and all that so i have uh, made a uh, what to say uh, in my antenatal card there is a note about the breast so breast examination in my first visit helps me to differentiate between who needs better care and who who uh, has, needs the routine care and also patient realizes that there is something that doctor is going to speak to me about breastfeeds uh, this is a message i want to give and i i i also request my bsog colleagues as well as kasoga colleagues to include uh, this uh, uh, topic as by in, in our uh, cmes and webinars thank you dr anuradha and i would also like to say so i have the same thing i think both of us have the same wavelength i have a page in my antenatal card with diagrams about the positions of breastfeeding and mm -hmm. as she said i do a first check up not only for the breastfeeding part of it the woman needs to realize that the breast is a part of her pregnancy also they don't attribute that breast is going because they're so worried about the black marks on their breast the mount, the areola enlarging and sometimes some women may have a fibroadenoma or sometimes very rarely a malignant lump also so i make it a habit at the first visit any woman pregnant or non pregnant i examine her breast and of course at term we do speak to them in an antenatal clinic we keep groups of women who are at term and we talk to them along with their husbands i make this very very important because the husband plays a very important role in helping her breastfeed especially when the baby is very restless during the nights they need to take up a role uh, very very um, um, confidently and they should share the responsibility i feel sir. okay thank you sir uh, uh, and again so uh, and again in our uh, medical colleges we have a lactation specialist who does this uh, postnatally she goes to each uh, woman and uh, we will come uh, to that we will come to those those questions okay, later sir. we are still the pregnant woman has not yet come to the labor room <laughs> okay we are sir. still with the pregnant woman no, antenatally yes. antenatally Antenate, also antenatally. That we arrange for a yeah. antenatal counseling sir thank you ma'am antenatally we are still thing very bharti has made a very very nice and valid comment she has pictures of positioning that's a great point so in relation to that point i now request rajeshri as the pregnancy has advanced into the third trimester and maybe a woman is going to deliver in the next 3 2 or 2 to 4 weeks how would you structure what messages would you like to give to this lady in relationship to uh, you know preparing her mind for successful breastfeeding uh, sir first of all uh, uh, she has to be made aware of the concept that let not she be biased by the trendy uh, culture which is happening in the western world or consider that breastfeeding is something uh, out of fashion or uh, not good for her first and foremost that she is the provider of the uh, nectar for the life for her baby and that is the greatest challenge for her apart from giving birth it's also her responsibility and duty to see that the nutritional care of the baby is provided well and uh, she is going to be a great uh, engineer in the structuring of the health of the baby which is totally her own doing and her empowered uh, 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 happening first and foremost and then she has to be also spoken about uh, 
the kind of uh, problem she may uh, come across, uh, maybe it was a normal delivery or a cesarean delivery and how often and how frequently she has to start and initiate the feeding and mm -hmm. how good is the first few drops of milk for the baby and don't go by the concept that uh, it has to be discarded or what the elders say in the family that uh, that is not good enough. It may not provide the nutritional requirement, but then definitely it is going to help uh, the baby for the uh, immunological aspect. And also that, especially in the first uh, day or 24 hours when the milk is not sufficient enough, they get discouraged and they feel that why should we feed when uh, the baby is not getting satisfied or so, but it has to be reinstated that as the baby goes on suckling, then the milk will come. And then with the 48 hours is the time when uh, the entire uh, process of secretion and uh, uh, expulsion uh, will take place and uh, she shouldn't give up. How much ever the baby is feeding or uh, holding on to the breast, she has to be uh, keep on doing that. And uh, the intervals at which she has to be feeding and the position and the night demands and the day demands, so on and so forth, that slowly, slowly she has to understand that this is going to be a challenging aspect for her life that she may definitely have to put in more efforts uh, to take care of the baby, but don't give up. There is a family to support and there are people to support. And the more she does with the ease and a relaxed state of mind is that the more uh, secretion and production will take place. And um, also, Apart from the feeding, the burping aspect also has to be reinstated to her. And I think uh, uh, they'll be very uh, well prepared by the time uh, uh, they deliver and uh, you know, they are ready for the feeding, sir. Thank you for uh, bringing in some nice points. As a woman is coming close to term and she is going to come back for getting into the labor ward, the way you would counsel her would be very different, but very crucially important. Why we say that? If a woman, pregnant lady knows that once she delivers the baby, she should keep her baby on her chest with close skin to skin contact. Also, if, we have to if, it is known, that, yeah. if it is known to her, yeah. yeah, it definitely makes a large amount of difference. I would like to ask uh, our president, Dr. Rupa Madam, to comment on that point. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks, sir, for uh, including me in this panel. Yes, uh, it's a very important uh, point uh, to be remembered and to be practiced. Actually, skin to skin contact is one of the initial steps which will make a uh, woman breastfeed successfully. We know that <clears throat> it's a difficult task. Uh, I, I don't think any woman would refuse, any mother would refuse not to breastfeed, okay? So she, every mother wants to breastfeed. But the problem is, in spite of uh, wanting to breastfeed, there are a lot of problems, especially in a primary mother, uh, in the initial few <coughs> days after mm -hmm. delivery. Uh, we all know that. So if we want her to successfully breastfeed, I think putting her onto the baby onto the chest that is providing skin to skin <clears throat> contact is the answer to most of the problems. So this is not just like that I'm talking about. There is a scientific evidence to show that early initiation of breastfeeding would bring up the early initiation, sorry, early skin to skin contact uh, brings up the early initiation rates for more than 50%. And that in turn leads to increase in the exclusive breastfeeding rate later on and thereby reducing the mortality and morbidity associated with not breastfeeding uh, an infant. So that is where it all leads to. So it's very important for us to remember this recommendation is there for almost more than 10 years now, but mm -hmm. still the skin to skin contact rates are very, very, very less. The many advantages apart from uh, uh, early initiation of breastfeeding, but I think this is the most important aspect. So what we need to do is immediately ah. after delivery, even before the cord is cut, we recommend the baby has to be placed onto the chest. And with the baby, uh, this, there has to be skin to skin contact. And we have seen that babies themselves will search for the breast and start breastfeeding. This is what we call it as breast cord. So there are a lot of advantages. I do understand their challenges, but we have seen it happening. 
and it is possible even in cesarean section deliveries thank you thank you for your valid remarks uh, but we missed out i think i missed out on two points which uh, rajeshri had very nicely brought out a woman who has coming very close to term and close to delivery she should be aware of the dangers of artificial feeding very nicely you have told madam bottle feeding can be dangerous supplements can be dangerous they are all dangers red red danger signs advantages of breastfeeding a little description you know colostrum you have right lightly told those are the things and one more thing would be is you can keep your baby pretty close to you and feed in the position of i mean keep it close you don't have to feed just provide warmth comfort the baby has so many advantages by the skin to skin contact which rupa velad has very nicely summarized now we go on to uh, let us say the woman has got admitted into the labor ward i mean labor room and she is reported in early labor my next question would be to nagratnama madam so in the labor room what arrangements you would like to make with your nurses nursing students house surgeons are also another important uh, people who are posted there finally our medical students are also posted in the labor area this is very true it is all over in all the medical colleges so woman has come in early labor and she gets admitted at that point of time what what extra uh, counseling points could be take to put across to this lady of course she is in pain now and then she will be getting pain we know that kindly unmute madam and give your opinion kindly unmute yeah the counseling of this uh, pregnant uh, i mean uh, patient who is in labor is very very important uh, uh, maybe uh, whoever is there maybe a nursing staff or the medical students or the interns or post graduates are also there so maybe it it really helps them apart from the delivery counseling what the thing we have to relieve her give a confidence into her mind what confidence uh, we have to build up confidence into the mother that she can uh, withstand the delivery and also later she can also she has to breastfeed the baby so that and then i think it's better to display some of the uh, uh, posters in the labor room regarding the breastfeeding which is i feel it's very important to uh, display the uh, posters there about the breastfeeding and also the benefits of uh, breastfeeding to the mother as well as to the baby so those things if we display and then while talking to her we can also talk about the benefits of breastfeeding so that she will be relieved from anxiety and even the pain of labor so that if you converse with her i think that will uh, take care of her because most of the time we keep them in the uh, side rooms till uh, she is uh, almost uh, 50% uh, i mean uh, till 6 7 uh, cm dilated and later only we'll take her to the labor room for the when she is in active phase so during that time i think we do allow the uh, attenders also to be with the patient so that they can relieve the anxiety from her and also talk about uh, the baby's uh, thing how it can be born and uh, what is the uh, i mean how the course of labor and what she has to do immediately after the baby is born regard and the guard has given uh, a long uh, uh, this thing umbilical card so that so before cutting the umbilical card we can put the baby as madam said to the breast uh, we can put it on the chest baby crawls to the uh, this thing um, to the breast and it will start and also we must tell her by putting the baby to the breast we can also uh, prevent the postpartum hemorrhage which takes place in the um, immediately after the placental delivery it will it will also help to separate the placenta and the postpartum hemorrhage uh, and also help obstetrician more it will be because she will not go for pph it will obstetrician is yeah. more help than the mother yeah blood so, blood yeah. loss will be less we can so, minimize the blood loss and yeah. also then involution it helps in involution yeah. so okay. i think counseling uh, regarding the 
very nice uh, to also to malaria and to. as well as the breastfeeding benefits and uh, to the mother as well as to the this thing we have to say and putting the posters is uh, again an important Excellent. aspect that is a very good point having nice posters in the antenatal area a mother is in early labor and there may be sometimes 3 hours 6 hours 7 hours of time i very rightly nagratnama madam has said it's a window of opportunity counseling can be further carried upon and you know mother must be reassured that you will go through the pain process very soon you will have a beautiful child with you you have to initiate skin to skin contact position the baby nicely and these things can also be addressed in early labor thank you very much for those very valid comments now i would like to ask uh, uh, dr mallikarjun dr mallikarjun you are there yes sir i am there sir yesterday we were in uh, training about 100 nursing students and 10 post graduates in raj rajeshwari medical college and yes, we showed them a small video the breast crawl video yes sir kindly tell us what was the impact of this video on the learning uh, young minds the so first of all you know uh, good kindly, evening everybody we would like uh, to see your face also uh, good evening more sir the president the good evening rupa madam president then uh, namaste sir banapurmat sir and all the sir, we want your here, video sir. dr banapurmat wants your video on switch on your uh, video it's I, okay i uh, no, no problem. I am walking outside and then uh, listening to you all. Suddenly, my call came. Otherwise, I wanted to be in the room. Okay. Uh, yeah, but still, I will on my video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please so, go. Please go. Yeah, good evening, uh, everybody, all the luminaries, and uh, things have gone well through a world breastfeeding week. Congratulations to Rupa Bella the, and uh, Dr. Morris, sir, being the uh, you know presidents of both the important chapters. Good evening, Shivanand. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Shivanand is looking very energetic today. From the beginning, <laughs> I am observing. Yeah. And then during the program, what happened is all the students said, the first expression was that, you know, wow. They were so thrilled with that moment. And when we asked them, they said, it really created some motivation in them, inspiration in them that they had not seen something like that before. Mm. Though being in the nursing, this thing. Second point was, you know, they understood that the, the such a, uh, a natural mechanism, when the baby is put onto the mother's chest with skin to skin, the uh, movement of the baby towards the breast, because the smell of the, uh, you know, uh, amniotic fluid, and the motor secretions are same and baby is attracted so nicely and then exactly latches on to the breast. It all happens within 10 minutes without any much help. So that was the very impressive thing that they felt. I think uh, uh, as all of us have opined today here, it, it's more of practical interaction, practical <laughs> clinical you know, uh, exposure to them would make it very, very uh, more <laughs> effective and interesting for the coming, uh, you know, generation of uh, healthcare workers. That's what I observed, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, sir. Very Thank nice. you, sir. Now, Nagratma, madam, you said you have posters, but now you will not see a nursing student without a mobile phone. You will not see a Aya also will have mobile phone. Mothers also have mobile phone. Everybody has mobile phone. Very few may not have. Very few. I think maybe less than 5%. Mobile phone is available with everybody. We showed the breast crawl video. Rupa Madam made that remark. It's a 7-minute video. www.breastcrawl.org All these students quickly opened their video and they have preserved in their mobile. Every postcard of obstetrics can preserve it in their mobile. Nurses can have it. You know, something there on the wall, nobody sees that. If you see a live video, shown to a woman in... Uh, yeah. Uh, shown to the woman that this you keep the baby in skin-to-skin -skin contact 
this baby the gentle touch of the of course there are risks it is very slippery very very slippery it has to be supervised you can't leave it just to the mother she is herself gone through labor but the nurse nurse or a responsible trained person should be there next to her make sure that the baby doesn't slip and fall off the vernix caseosa is very very slippery we don't recommend anybody to wipe off the vernix caseosa it should be allowed to dry on the skin of the baby only thing is nagratnama madam also told us that the cord is quite long enough you have delivered the baby baby is now put on mother is lying prone and baby is put face down we don't have to really rush into initiating breastfeeding we don't have to do anything other than giving skin to skin contact that's all providing skin to skin contact would create great benefits i request dr shivanand to say a little about skin to skin contact sir good evening uh, thank you kasoza and uh, i ap and iwcf for being a part of uh, this uh, wonderful discussion uh, as sir said the skin to skin contact is a huge opportunity for mother to notice pick up the cues where baby is ready for the breastfeeding and look out for the baby's movements which itself relieves the mother of all the tension worry anxiety wonderful and it is a opportunity for the baby to go on feeding whenever it wants it's like a baby and the mother in a bed in same clothing so that kind of skin to skin contact real a great advantage both to the baby and to the mother so sir hmm. so you are the one who has started so definitely you can put more to it sir thank you you know what is required is uh, the nurse student or the post graduate resident postgraduate student need not bother about putting the baby to the breast just put the give skin to skin contact it is amazing the baby itself is drawn by the smell it is used to the amniotic smell because it was there in for 9 months all those 1 270 days it was floating in the amniotic fluid it knows the smell even there is a smell signal which will come from the areola which also has the same smell of the amniotic fluid it gets drawn crawls and itself goes to the breast of the mother and then it will attach while this is happening some amazing na- nature amazing nature comes into play and that is the beauty the way a baby would attach when given breast crawl it is it is such an excellent attachment and positioning all this happens because of very many scientific reasons number 1 as long as the mother was laboring lot of corticosteroid hormones are released in her body steroids are released these hormones keep the baby very alert and active for about 30 to 40 minutes 30 to 40 minutes after that time we know that the baby is going into a state of deep sleep even the mother who has delivered also will start going into sleep now they have come through labor and then calm descends on her mind on her body as if she has achieved some great thing but this is the time when skin to skin contact is given i was telling that one must see it happen the baby attaches self attaches itself you don't have to push the baby to the breast just give the contact make sure the baby doesn't fall off somebody is there next to her cover the baby with the bed sheet between the baby and the mother there is nothing both of them are covered with the bed sheet sterile bed sheet and allow allow this the child's hands will be touching the mother's bosom chest area she can see her baby by herself she becomes so thrilled lot of oxytocin is released in her body sometimes i say one ampule two ampule this is hundreds of ampules of oxytocin is released natural hundreds and hundreds which will result in complete expulsion of the placenta 
these are the birthing events which naturally should happen very unfortunately we have moved away from nature therefore providing skin to skin contact not only improves the initiation rates there are lot of benefits to the mother lot of benefits to the purpureum we know that blood loss will be it will come down and the uterus contracts very nicely because of the surge of oxytocin and the oxytocin is surged because of contact between baby and mother she feels so very happy the young one's tiny fingers touching her body baby attaches by itself and starts sucking so well it will things will go on well so now we have come the scene has come to the labor room baby is born and then skin to skin contact providing is not a very easy thing to happen rupa madam you have already told but i would like you to further emphasize what changes you would do you are an administrator in kle we know you hold uh, you have been a previous hod of the pediatrics department you are director of research there are so many things which you have give the post of a administrator what changes you would like to do in the labor room to bring about this skin to skin contact yes sir uh as you said it is not a easy task because we have been practicing what we are doing for a very long time so to bring in any change it requires a team effort before that <clears throat> we would i mean uh, what we would like to do is to look at what are the existing practices and then call all the people who are responsible pediatricians neonatologists obstetricians post graduates whoever are responsible to uh, bring this change uh, you call a meeting and talk to them about this new change and basically not just endorse on it but bring in tell about the advantages the scientific basis for it and why we need to do it and convince them about this particular change and together bring in a policy has a, a hospital policy that this is going to be the change and how to bring in this change also has to be discussed so this basically is these are the steps in what we call as quality um initiative programs so that is that goes by a cycle called as pdsa that is planning doing it and then trying to Uh, look at it and then act on it so this these are the steps so basically what it means is bring the team together tell them what are the changes required and then try to bring in a policy wherein we spell out the sop saying that who is going to do what and then how to bring in the change i think that is the first step which needs to be taken up and then with everybody's consensus as a team we have to move forward and also look at the challenges the difficulties so uh, the obstetrician may say it is impossible or an anesthetist may say it is difficult to put the baby on onto the chest where the mother is undergoing a cesarean section so that may be a situation so discuss about each scenarios and try to get over it and then try to bring in this policy uh, uh, and basically to review it repeatedly uh, Uh, is very important review the process of what is happening to the policy and tackle the challenges with solutions uh, on day to day basis i think uh, that is in a nutshell sir it is very easily said than done but definitely with the team approach and involvement of all the stakeholders uh, it is going to be possible yeah very nice pdsa plan do study and act first of all you must know what are the prevailing practices and what are the barriers matron the senior nurse labor ward nurses they all must be taken into what is called as a bottom up approach you start with the bottom that is use using the ayas the labor room attenders people who are helping you the nurses who are there students who are there they all must be taken into the program when it is done initially there are some difficulties but once it is done as rupa madam says things will go on so well it is really amazing to notice that things will go very very well here of course uh, the government of india has mandated few certain things you know a child could be stolen therefore tag has to be put footprint must be taken handprint must be taken weighing must be done 
So and then uh, there are so many procedures which a nurse has to follow, and it is mandated there in the labor room. Without that, her job is not done. So how are we going to all this? You know, uh, if we want to bring keep everything in into a picture, the best statement made is first forty minutes, baby is alert, awake, sucking, vigorously sucking. It will be putting its hand in its own mouth. There will be salivation in the mouth. Given the chance, the baby attaches very nicely. That breastfeeding video, which I was mentioning, was done from our own country in a place called Nandurbar, Maharashtra district, Maharashtra state, Nandurbar district. It's a town township where Prashant Gangal brought out this video. It is available for everybody. You can just download it from. www.breastcrawl.org and after 40 minutes the baby will start you not only it will be sleeping you it will be surprising all of you could see that first 20 minutes it is so awake and alert like a cid inspector it is watching here and there all around making movements but once the baby 40 minutes have elapsed it goes to deep sleep and many newborns also be may be found snoring that is the amount of relaxation comes in their mind even the mother also takes rest and she becomes the calm descends on her mind that is what has been told so procedures like weighing the baby tag putting footprint fingerprint all that can be done only after the baby has gone to uh, it, it has taken a very good breast feed and it has fed well so those changes also must be kept in mind and of course to bring in any change if if it is you are a small your own maternity hospital you can do it because you are controlling everything but you are in a teaching hospital you need to bring everybody into the planning to the replacement uh now we'll move on to the next question sometimes the baby doesn't the mother the delivery doesn't happen and the obstetrician decides that they will have to take up for section now i would request dr lata dr lata is a professor of pediatrics at ssims shamnur shushankarpa institute of medical sciences and research center davangere not only she is a professor of pediatrics she has undergone iycf training with uh, dr my uh, faridi at delhi she is a very strong pillar of our in, uh, iycf chapter madam i would request you how you bring about some changes in the ot so up to now we discussed labor room before that we discussed antenatal period early antenatal period later antenatal period baby coming to term child birth now it is a it has shifted things become more difficult you have gone to labor ot i would like your comments wow uh, once again good evening to one and all Uh, at the outset i would like to thank the organizers uh, dr uh, the kasoga team dr bharti dr doni mat and uh, iap karnataka team uh, dr rupa bellad uh, uh, manisha bandarkar uh, and iycf team dr dinkar more and uh, dr malika arjun and dr hire mat and uh, none other than our professor and uh, senior uh, and strong uh, uh, pillar again i just uh, he said me that and he was a strong uh, the uh, foundation was laid by uh, dr banapur mat and dr late uh, dr nirmala kesri which is uh, taking such a great momentum i'm happy to see that this year i think everywhere i think all over the state so many uh, programs are being conducted in such a good way uh, it's a, a good note to start uh, hopefully this will take a greater still greater momentum and uh, we'll achieve 100% of initiation of breastfeeding which we are lacking at the moment so coming to the question dr banapumat asked me like what happens if the mother uh, we already uh, talked about so many things about antenatally so antenatally if the mother is aware of that she needs to breastfeed that's a one valid point i think the mother should be i think the best person would be to create awareness amongst the mothers so the now the mother is in the ot the scenario is like mother is in the Uh, has undergone cesarean section so what are the problems we are facing or what 
uh, things are happening. Uh, so the recent NFHS data has shown that nearly 89% of the deliveries are taking place in the hospitals and out of which only initiation, early initiation is taking place only in the 41% of the uh, babies. Early initiation is taking place. So what is the loophole here or what is lacking here? Is it the awareness among the staff is less or we, that uh, skilled staffs are less or the staff is not aware of or even if they're aware of because of the uh, lack of manpower, we are facing all these problems, one thing. And having said that in the cesarean section, when the scenario goes like this, like mother has undergone the cesarean and the obstetricians will be busy. Even so many obstetricians talk so nicely about the uh, breastfeeding uh, things. So they are aware of so much they are into it now. And they, they think that they need to counsel the mother antenatally also. So they are busy with suturing and they are busy worried with the other uh, uh, operational procedures. And whether it is the responsibility of the anesthetist or whether it is the responsibility of the doctor who is attending the labor ward, uh, labor, or the junior doctors who are there attending, like if, uh, if I say like any house surgeons or the postgraduates who are junior postgraduates or senior postgraduates attending the delivery, so all this, it, it looks like we have to train all these people and they should be aware of still the babies can be breastfed. This is one challenging because even in the, uh, I think next question, Dr. Banapurmat is going to ask, is it, shall I talk here only, sir, about yeah, that? Yeah, 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 section yeah, emergency. Yeah, complete it. Hmm. Please go ahead. Yeah, because uh, as, it was, as it has been seen that some studies have shown that breastfeeding Initiation of breastfeeding is very, very important because the later on exclusive breastfeeding, what we talk up to, like for up to six months, that will go on if initiation is done correctly. So that's what the studies have shown because otherwise it will drop down to 32%. One study has shown that it drops down to 32% at uh, two months of age and 12% at six months of age, especially following cesarean section, they say. So because of this, I think in the OT, we have to motivate everyone. Still, the mothers can be breastfed at that point. As everyone talked about skin-to-skin -skin contact, that initial skin-to-skin -skin contact will initiate lactation in the mother and all the hormonal changes will be taking place. So the suckling process will help the mother to initiate breastfeeding. And especially depends upon, again, the what type of anesthesia she has uh, given, whether it is local anesthesia or the general anesthesia. Of course, in general anesthesia, the mother has to come out of the anesthetic effect. So leaving apart, most of the deliveries will be taking place by local anesthesia. So mother still, she can breastfeed. As uh, Dr. Banapur much rightly said that so many like tagging uh, to put the name tag on and taking the footprint, all those things might, before that only, we can give the baby to the mother because the mother is waiting, isn't it? For the nine months she has waited how her baby is going to be, how the baby is, uh, how the baby will be and uh, that too in the cesarean section means she'll be worried about her baby as well. So the once the baby's face, if she sees, and if, if the ba baby is shown to the mother and if, if we initiate this uh, lactation, that goes uh, very in a long run, it makes a lot of difference. So this is this point everybody should be aware of. And so that one of the one or the other, whoever in the OT, especially the nurses also can help these mothers to breastfeed. And otherwise, after that, the, what we have seen, what are the challenges we are seeing right now is, so once the, the procedure is done, the mother will be in the recovery room and most of the time they are separated. So the baby will be other side, the mother is in the recovery room. And once that is done, all the process is done, the mother will be shifted to the postnatal ward. The, and nobody knows whether the um, baby has been given breastfeed. And once the mother is transferred to the postnatal ward, whether the baby has baby will be sleeping and mother also because of the anesthetic effect and the pain, labor pain and, and whatever the reasons they found in the study was either it could be due to the pain or pain is mainly due to, again, because of the operational procedure and uh, tired and also other health issues. They say health issues they meant was anesthetic effect. So because of that, mother will be sleeping and baby also will be sleeping. We know that golden period, if you, if you have lost that half an hour after birth, which is very, very important, that if it is lost, that creates a lots of problem. So make sure that that's what we were, we had a recently had a panel discussion regarding that. We involved anesthetist also 
so that we made aware of how important that initiation of breastfeeding is very important uh, in even in the ot so uh, we did discuss about any anesthetic effects or the agents which can affect the feeding so that also they should need to take care of and so that there the anesthetists can interfere us telling that th this can happen but otherwise there are no other contraindications till the mother can breastfeed the baby and that initiation can take place in the ot before the mother is shifted to the uh, postnatal ward and we suggested that so that everybody should be aware of when we once we hand over the baby from the ot to the labor uh, postnatal ward make sure that make a checklist telling that like whether the baby has passed meconium whether the baby has passed urine likewise you can put a column there telling that whether the baby has passed uh, baby has given breastfeeds or initiation has been taken place here the baby has given to the mother that if we make sure i think we don't tend to miss it i think this can be one of the suggestion i can make at this point even the obstetricians everybody should be responsible for this so that make sure that the baby has been given breastfeeds before the baby is transferred to the uh, postnatal ward or to the uh, post operative ward thank you thank you dr lata a very important consideration in uh, all this discussion which has come out first of all let us start setting the house in order in labor room then we can move on to the labor ot also even in the labor ot there are partners anesthesia anesthetist is there and his pgs are also there it's a team obg people are there their post graduates are there pediatrician is there he has come with a post graduate house surgeons are posted there are nurses who are working there are nursing students are working now you can imagine that there are many many players available but it is a question of delegating some work and responsibility which should be taken up with zeal and enthusiasm once as you nightly said 98% of cesarean sections are under spinal anesthesia very rarely a woman may have ga that to because of medical complications let us not talk about that so once the anesthetist has given the spinal injection and till the patient is shifted of course he has to be monitoring the lady you, we all know that uh, there is hardly any risk for this lady she is awake she is alert many anesthetists are talking to her cracking jokes making her feel very happy at the same time once the baby has come out of her body anesthetist is a person who can be used his his time can be used if we train train our anesthetist people and a nurse also if she is there available who is also trained with the slippery baby there has to be a curtain or a screen between the operating field and the mother and this can has been done in very many places and initiation can be initiated in the labor ot itself you you can provide skin to skin contact just provide skin to skin contact baby will take care of the rest don't push the baby to feed on the nipple no nothing you do it allow it just to remain there it can be brought from the side rag nagratnam madam was telling it can be brought from above get can be brought from the side on the side where the iv line has not been put one hand is also blocked because of the iv line all these things can be done but the point remains provide skin to skin contact that is the bottom line and this should happen before the baby goes to deep sleep as we have already noticed that it may be around 20 to 40 minutes now i would request dr durgappa sir durgappa you are there kindly unmute okay dr durgappa may take little time and i will pass the question on to uh, lata madam herself yes lata, there is a very important consideration comes in is the nipple should not be damaged for in the first few days of the postnatal ward as well as in the labor room or the labor ot nipples should not be damaged by the baby so what what uh, points you, you would like to emphasize on that to make sure that the baby doesn't damage the nipple of its mother how is this prevented i am bringing up this question very purposely i want your your opinion i do understand 
yeah this is a problem we do come across very frequently this is because again and again we keep on telling that's mainly the latching and the proper positioning of the baby is the main mm -hmm. issue here so therefore every problems what we face in the breastfeeding the main thing we we have to see look look out for is the good attachment of the baby to the breast that is the main thing this is the simple technique but it involves lot of little bit of uh, uh, we have to give a time and uh, patience we need to have that much of patience to teach the mother so the uh, we ask the mother it's better when we go for a postnatal ward rounds uh, whether she has breastfed the baby and as she if she doesn't have any problems don't interfere with that so not to make any comments or anything whatever in whatever position whether she is lying down whether she is sitting or whatever position she is feeding and if both baby and uh, mother are comfortable in breastfeeding and just observe for the positioning and the good attachment of the baby whether the whole areola is inside the baby's mouth and if baby is sucking well and if you can hear the gulping sound and if the baby is doing well you need not worry about it if mother complains of pain that means there is a problem with the attachment so we have to look as the mother to feed in front of you so that you can see like what is happening and just to support and help given to the mother will definitely it will help her to come out of this problem so this is what i suggest that all the babies uh, uh, all the mothers should be given this support uh, during the postnatal period where before she leaves the hospital she should establish good breastfeeding this is one point which makes them in a, when she goes to the community in a long run she can completely breastfeed a baby without any problem thank you thank you lata the baby was delivered either normally or through a section it has come to the postnatal ward lata has made a very strong remark the mother should not complain of any pain while breastfeeding her baby very very important point most mothers don't complain only they will not even tell the doctor it is very unfortunate they don't even tell and if the baby is gums are biting the tip of the nipple once the nipple tissue skin is damaged later on things become very very nasty and very difficult for everybody on this point what i would like to say is if you have provided skin to skin contact in the labor oti or labor room you really don't worry about this point because the baby attaches so well it will take the areola very nicely into the mouth these problems are prevented it is preventive gynecology preventive pediatrics preventive lactation management all preventive 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 aspects shivanand now the baby is in the postnatal ward you want to teach the mother how to look out for hunger cues can you tell us a little about hunger cues to our obstetric colleagues and friends dr shivanand you are there Uh, Rupa, madam, I would like you to take up this question. Yes, sir. <clears throat> When the baby uh, wants to breastfeed, it shows, it gives some indicators, it gives some cues, which I think mother needs to uh, identify and start breastfeeding. Like it starts smacking the lips, or moving towards the breast, or it starts making some vocal sounds, like cooing sounds, and he turns. towards the breast that's in the first phase the second phase is he becomes a little vigorous he starts moving the limbs and he again uh, start moving towards the breast and he's little agitated at this stage the last stage is the real disastrous stage wherein even if the mother wants to breastfeed he will not catch on to the breast so there are these three different stages where the cues are being given very sensitively by the baby and the mother needs to identify and it's very essential that she identifies it early so that he will latch on to the breast correctly if uh, he is put on to the breast at that particular time so there are cues there is body language there's lip smacking moments turning towards the breast then uh, cooing sounds crying all these are the indicators of the cues saying that the baby is hungry and he needs to be breastfed thank you very much dr rupa this is a very excellent physiology that we have to learn uh, many a times you know in the obstetric ward postnatal wards 
all this is possible and all this can happen smoothly on one precondition what is that precondition the precondition is very 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 simple the baby should be very close to the mother there should be baby should not be put in a crib or a cradle or the grandmother should not put it put be put the baby in her lap the distance between baby and mother should be very very less very minimal in fact what she is covering herself bed sheet the same thing should be the cover for the baby also when the baby is very close to the mother nicely dr rupa madam has told us the sick baby gives signals to the mother these signals are very phased and very nice first phase is the baby makes a few hand movements makes a cooing sound and it has when i read in the paper i mean in the my text about these hunger cues what really it has written has been written is the woman who is also sleeping suddenly she gets up you know so these are natural mechanisms which happen the baby moves a little makes a cooing sound like a bird and if the mother has been told about that that is the earliest cue hunger cue then the baby brapa ho yeah shivanand dr shivanand sir yeah, yeah sir yours yeah why don't you talk a little about the early hunger yeah, yeah, yeah. sir thanks for the opportunity i somehow net got disconnected ah oh, it's okay uh, okay sir yeah sir as you know because you are stressed totally uh, baby has born with <laughs> feeding reflexes right it is natural it is ready hmm. so just you have to pick up them up that's all hmm. so immediately after the birth the baby is vigorous alert looking around to suck something hmm. and in that stage if you make it skin to skin contact baby is ready to take anyhow so mother to pick up some of the hunger or the cues in the baby to feed the baby so one is baby will be earlier then the baby will be in the flex position it is have got a flex at the limbs flex in the upper limb and even the fist will be closed maybe it is trying to take the fist into the mouth or fingers into the mouth sucking then it is making movements of the oral cavity and the tongue it will be making movements of the tongue and the oral cavity and searching maybe start making the sounds looking around try to suck something if mother picks up this very good or else if the baby progresses during that progress it may become something frantic or it making more vigorous movement the last step is the cry the cry is the last step of the hunger we should not wait till the baby to cry because what happens sir if the baby start crying so it may be difficult maybe calm down or even it may be difficult baby to latch on so before the baby cries the mother has to pick up early cues in the newborn baby make the baby to take up to the feet and it will be born the best opportunity for this is keep the baby and the mother skin to skin contact or rooming in bed in or in the close contact when the baby with the little cues the mother can pick up and take up anyhow so this this has been the one of the important thing for us to even continuation of good milk production and continuation for a longer duration even day and night so these cues definitely helps for the mother to feed the baby regularly frequently so that the milk production continues with a good amount and mothers also feel satisfactory with this movement thank you thank you for the explanation sorry to interrupt sir i know yes, this sir. is a very uh, very good discussion which could go on for another few hours uh, but uh, we have almost reached uh, we have passed the time sir i think okay. uh, you can uh, decide and uh, yeah yeah we will as early as possible now uh, wrap up the discussion what i would like to add to excellent description by shivanan in the early cues the baby's eyes are still closed it may be still closed even then it is a baby who is ready for a feed many times the mother will wait you know malkondide innu eddilla kan bitilla alta illa if you wait till it cries your breastfeeding will never become successful so hunger cues must be taught to the mother and then 
postpartum period also will go on very smoothly so i would like to end up with a small statement baby should be snuggling with the mother snuggle baby snuggles with the mother the nature giggles see how beautiful the statements are as long as we keep baby and mother close to each other baby is is relaxed emotionally comfortable mind is peaceful things will happen well so we have today discussed a lot about early breastfeeding initiation in the breastfeeding skin to skin contact labor room and i think all most of the questions have been dealt very nicely so oh, before i would like to wrap up i would like to request uh dr kasturi donimat madam i want your uh, remarks on this uh, discussion which has happened so can i <clears throat> just before uh, Be- madam Dr. kasturi rupa would like to summarize yes sir uh, it's not just a summary i just wanted to bring out one issue which is very commonly seen in the postnatal wards uh that is in the first first day or the second day we know cholesterol is thick it does not come out uh, in large quantities so, mm. so most of the time the mother is concerned that she is not getting the breast milk and here i think our role both obstetricians and pediatricians role is very important in convincing her that it does not come out like a jet or like a flow and she has to continue to breastfeed why i'm saying is this i have seen the practice of prescribing something else during these three days either lactogen or advising mother to give yes. cow's milk or giving something else okay sir during these three to five days saying that till the milk comes in you give this mm-hmm. so i think it's a very dangerous concept which i think we should not be encouraging because this is where we are stopping the baby to breastfeed and there is no stimulus and so there is no milk production and no cholesterol so it's all linked to one another so we i think have to stress on the point that she needs to continue to breastfeed whatever amount of milk she is getting because i have seen sometimes many people squeezing the breast first day and second day even the doctors squeezing and saying yes yes your milk is not coming we'll never expect cholesterol to come out if we squeeze the breast so True. this is a very important point i think has to be remembered by all of us because this is really creating lot of problem once we prescribe lactogen i don't think mother will go back to breastfeed so yes. this is a very important it's a very very important we we see this scenario quite often Yeah. Yes, and that's why well, I thought there's a no, argument with the parents and the pediatrician yeah. and the kind of obstetrician, okay. and it is yeah. very yeah. difficult yeah. to convince them. Now, with the donor milk available in our hospital, the easy concept is get the donor <laughs> milk from the milk bank and give. So we should think about what is it going to cause to the baby and to the mother, and ultimately it stops uh, the breastfeeding. We will not be promoting. So I think this is where we have to. Uh, stress to the mother, convince the mother to continue to breastfeed in the initial few days so that she can successfully breastfeed. Yeah, just to complement what Rupa has said and uh, quickly finish that in thirty seconds. Uh, very true. First two to three days, mothers may feel that the milk has not come in in good quantities. It's a very common feeling, and more so the nights become very very miserable because in the night the baby wakes up once in every half an hour. the day time it sleeps for longer periods and in the night the consultant is not there senior doctors are not there it's everything left to the nurses how they hold the ship it all depends and they say oh on some glucose near kudso so vakla la ko ne sakra near kudso some things will go on all these must be kept in mind because why this happens is if the baby and mother are separated the baby starts howling if the baby is kept very close to the mother crying comes down remember that keep the baby close kangaroo mother care if that is told when you make the evening round pakkakke malukskondirama ratri atre nede gochko saaku magu eshto sumnagatte and the baby has to suck frequently in the night first 72 hours then lactogenesis gets established i lend the discussion there request kasturi donimat to make her comments then we will close the seminar webinar thank you sir uh, thank you very much sir 
Uh, it was really, really very excellent discussion by you, sir, and you and your uh, panelists, uh, Dr. Shivanand, Dr. Nagaratnamma, Dr. Rajeshwari, Dr. Rupa, Dr. M.J. Remat, sir, and Dr. Lata. Excellent discussion, excellent inputs, excellent take-home messages. Sir, it was pleasure listening to you, sir. It is our lifetime opportunity which we have got to listen to your words of wisdom. Really, it was real academic extravaganza. That's so much such simple points you brought down, sir, which we really can implement back at our workplace. So it was real learning for us also. And I, I think it is an opportunity which we have got, we Kasogians, all the OBGYNs to listen to you, sir. And we would like to have you on our and few more platforms so that we can educate all our Kasoga members. And what you're telling, sir, like 40, it's just 40%. So we want it to be like at least 80% immediate within one hour breastfeeding, sir. In our hospital, we are Lakshya accredited, Lakshya accredited, and we are uh, doing immediate breastfeeding, sir. We deliver the baby on the mother's abdomen. Mm -hmm. and that skin-to-skin -skin contact compulsory we have made in the, our labor room, though it's a government hospital, we have made it very, very compulsory. And even after the cesarean, we are requesting the anesthetist, please allow us to keep the baby on the abdomen. And we are, uh, we were like, we want the baby to feed immediately. It means a nurse and the anesthetist, if they're educated, we can help the baby immediately take feeds even before the patient is shifted out of the uh, OT. At present, but we are keeping them in the post of and we have kept one nurse there who will make sure that the babe, mother as soon as she shifted within one hour after C-section also baby is fed, then only baby is handed over. Sir. So we're making it sure, but uh, we have to make it in a large scale everywhere. And I will be telling our postgraduates, see, baby has got such big umbilical cord, 18 inch. Why do you think that has got baby? If you keep on the mother's abdomen, it will crawl up to the uh, if you keep in, if, as you told, Kangaroo Mother Care, if you keep on the chest, so with that long cord, baby should start feeding immediately. Even I tell them why the nipple and areola are dark, you think, because baby can immediately identify where is the uh, breast, where is the nipple, and can start feeding. So that is how nature has developed, and we have to start promoting it that way. So, and one more thing I always keep telling them it's Akshay Patre. The more you empty, more it will fill. I right. tell the patients like that also, because patients keep on telling, we don't get milk, we don't get milk. I tell them, unless you empty, how are you going to get? It's Akshay Patre. Once you empty, then only it's going to become full. So oh. that's how we have to, it's small, small things we have to. So today it was really excellent. It was great learning for me and for all our girls. So it's really, it, uh, thank you so much for gracing this occasion. You are such a senior person, sir. I think you have mentored all the, uh, the faculty and delegates who are here. So we always look up to you. Thank you so much again, Thank once you. again, from Kasoga family for accepting. Right. And we'd look forward to more learning from you in a future series, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kasturi. You can now conclude. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> sir, words can't express our gratitude to all of you. But I request Dr. Nagratnamma, the chairman of the Kasoga Breast Committee, to kindly render the formal vote of thanks. Madam, kindly unmute yourself. Madam. Yeah. So it's my honor and privilege to give a vote of thanks for this uh, end of the this wonderful webinar where we really uh, you took us to the uh, very important uh, practical aspects of breastfeeding so i think all uh, foxians and kasogians we should uh, impart these changes in our labor room and in the ot and thank you very much sir for that uh, wonderful discussion and you really moderated well i think as madam said we would like to have you for more webinars so that uh, I think a uh, large number of people can get benefited by this, by your talk. Thank you very much, sir, for coming and uh, giving, uh, moderating this uh, wonderful session. We really learned a lot from you. So, and also I would like to thank our pat uh, chief patron, Dr. Hiramet, sir. In spite of his busy schedule, he could uh, log in for initially and give his inputs on this uh, uh, panel discussion. And also our president, uh, uh, Madam Kasturi Donimat for uh, uh, gracing the occasion and also giving her uh, uh, words of wisdom and concluding the um, uh, this uh, webinar. 
and uh, also i would like to thank our uh, iap uh, karnataka uh, president dr rupa bellath uh, for giving us uh, uh, opportunity to listen to you madam again in uh, our kasoga webinar and thank you very much and uh, i think we all i think both of us should uh, put together pediatricians as well as uh, the obstetricians should come forward and uh, take the uh, i mean the initiate all these changes we should change our things in fact uh, earlier in the i mean if you go back when i was a student i think uh, we were practicing this especially when i have seen in uh, uh, marthas and uh, some of the christian institute where the uh, midwives used to conduct the deliveries they used to do that and now also i have seen in some of the institute they uh, they put the uh, baby on to the mother's abdomen and uh, they bring about the skin to skin contact i think we should go back to those days and bring back these changes again and also i would like to uh, thank our uh, uh, president um, i uh, iycf uh, uh, dr more dinakar sir for uh, coming and uh, giving his uh, uh, inputs on this uh, webinar and secretary iap Ka, iap karnataka chapter dr manisha bandarkar and secretary ivscf dr malika jain sir for uh, uh, joining this webinar and uh, giving us their uh, point of uh, i mean words of wisdom and also i would like to thank our kasoga secretary dr bharti rashekar uh, for uh, accepting to be the master of ceremony and conducting the uh, this webinar so well and our treasurer dr durga das and all our esteemed panelists dr rajeshri palla dr lata dr shivanand dr uh, um, anuradha parmesh who is a uh, vice president of ima karnataka chapter and president of dr swing and all the delegates who are logged in for this wonderful uh, session i think those people who got i mean who really logged into this uh, webinar are really benefited from your uh, uh, this uh, wonderful uh, moderation sir thank you very much and i think we would uh, again and this will be on the youtube i think uh, the people will definitely see this on the program and then i think uh, they we should make a changes in the labor room as well as in the ot and uh, also we should start our antenatal counseling uh, with uh, in a more effective way i would say in more effective way we should start doing our counseling both in the antenatal and the postnatal period thank you very much sir thank you all thank you thank Dr. you Adarsh, i think thank you. Uh, Dr. Adarsh has joined. I think uh, Adarsh. I think uh, we should put together. Thank you, I think. Dr. Banamat, Banaparmat sir, for spending your valuable time with us. Mm -hmm. We thank Dr. Rupa Bella and all the pediatricians over here. And I think we have to go a long way still to achieve at least a ninety percent of breastfeeding uh, at the, within the first hour in our country. And all of us need to do it, take this up on a war footing. This is for. Uh, sir, good, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Yes. Good evening, Dr. Adarsh. Yeah, yeah we welcome you, Adarsh. Uh, madam, madam, actually, I wanted to congratulate you first uh, because, you know, we started this job almost 17 years. I think uh, as we spoke to the previous day only, we thought we are going for Mother and Child and the Health Institute. So we are going to convert it. I think mm -hmm. we'll carry it together, madam. This is the uh, yeah. thing to start. This is yeah, a definitely, sir. Definitely, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. We can now thank end. You, the... thank, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Namaste, Namaste and good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. We have thank ended you. our breastfeeding week in a very uh, meaningful <laughs> way, sir. That's thank very you. nice. Yes. Nagratnama, yeah. madam, has become happy. We are. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very night. much. Okay. Once again, sir. Thank you. Good night. Thank good you, night, everyone. Good night. 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 Good